space. It's beautiful, isn't it? The stars, planets. It's beautiful, isn't it? And now we have our own transportation to get into space. But space is very different to Earth. It's almost zero Kelvin temperature, no oxygen that will leave you asphyxiated in space, and zero gravity that will leave you weightless in space. All of these problems is really dangerous unless you are trained. But it's not going to be easy to handle these type of trainings. But if there's a possibility that we can go to other planets like Mars, we need to know what should we do first before we depart for space. So today, I will be explaining about the preparation before we travel into space. The information was based on the interview I did with Dr. Pratiwi. So, before you can become an astronaut, you need to have this one simple thing. A bachelor degree. A bachelor degree in engineering, biological science, physical science, computer science, and mathematics. You also need to have at least 3 years of work experience after graduating, or 1000 hours of flying a jet aircraft. Then you have to pass a physical test where you need to have 20-20 vision, a height around 5 foot 2 till 6 foot 3, and your blood pressure not exceeding around 140-90. They also interview you and examine your physicality psychology, and air physiology, but through the human centrifuge, where it tests the astronauts could withstand the strong g-forces that can be expected during a flight into space, and the hyperbaric chamber, where it simulates the effects of high altitude on the human body. So you have to be in extremely good shape to become an astronaut. After getting selected by NASA, you go through your second phase of training. But you train in the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, and the training will last for two to three years. While training, you go to classrooms where you learn more about the mission, vehicle systems, space station systems, earth science, engineering, and space sciences. But you go through tons of training, like the Vomit Comet, where astronauts experience short periods of actual weightlessness aboard a plunging jet aircraft. You also train underwater at the neutral buoyancy lab to make you familiarize yourself with the environment of space. This means you have to be scuba qualified or you cannot be able to control yourself in space. Then we have the space vehicle mock-up facility. It consists of components that prepare astronauts for station operations. It is also the training facility where astronauts train. The training facility itself is a full replica of the International Space Station, providing as much realism as possible to match conditions that will be experienced upon the orbiting space station. There are also other machinery, like the Soyuz aircraft. This aircraft is the current transportation that will help you go to the ISS, but it is Russian-made, so you have to learn the Russian language and learn the system and controls of this aircraft. But NASA is currently developing a new aircraft that will replace the Soyuz aircraft, and it's called the Orion spacecraft, which will take us to the moon and Mars. They also train the astronauts with tons of simulation, like the docking simulator, where it simulates you docking a spacecraft in the ISS. You also train in the VR facility, where it simulates the environment of space. That's all the training facilities that I managed to record, but there's still more training that you have to do. After all that training, you get to receive your mission and your assignments, entering the final training phase. In the final few months of training, you only focus on activities, exercises, and experiments that are specific to the mission. For example, the mission STS-61H. The mission Dr. Pratiwi went through was to launch a new satellite, Palapa B3, and learn how long you can live in space. 
So the astronauts were focused on working on the satellite, but each astronaut had different assignments. For Dr. Pratiwi, she was a payload specialist who was tasked to handle highly complex or classified equipment carried aboard a space shuttle and to conduct experiments in space. Unfortunately, her mission was cancelled. But that doesn't mean that her journey has ended. That doesn't mean that you should lose hope. So go on, take that first step. Become the astronaut you always wanted to be. Because space is waiting for you.